is uh, three minutes to five a.m. Let's sing song of the garden. The Lord into his garden comes with spices, yield a rich perfume. The lilies grow and thrive, the lilies grow and thrive. Refreshing showers of grace divine. From the Father flows to every vine and makes the dead revive and makes the dead revive. Oh, that this dry and barren ground in springs of water may abound. A fruitful soil become, a fruitful soil become. The desert blossoms as the rose, when the Savior conquers all his foes. And makes his people one, and makes his people one. Come, brethren, you that love the Lord, and taste the sweetness of his words. In Father's ways go on, in Father's ways go on. Our troubles and our trials here will only make us richer there. When we arrive at home, when we arrive at home. It's already 5 a.m. It's all right. Let's begin our Hindu King by offering one standing bow to our beloved Putin. Hanimba, Sumpuname, Sumpuname, Sulajade, Hyunde, Baro, our most beloved Heavenly Parent. Today, June the 21st, 2015. Is Father's Day in the secular world. And we pray that it will be a, a glorious and victorious day for our true parent, our true father in heaven, and our true mother here on earth, the true children, the true grandchildren, and all the members who are attending them. We pray for their victory always good health and the prosperity of the true family. We pray also for all our leaders, especially our elder sister Sanjanin, the president of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, and her husband, Insupnin, the vice president of the Family Federation for World Peace. We pray for all of the umbrella organizations, especially the UPF and the UCF chairman, Dr. Sam Sukyang and his family. And we pray for all the continental leaders all over the world, especially our, our own Archbishop, Ki Hong Kim and his family. We pray for Chung Kim, that as there is a advisory right now that there is an NDRF, the 
Middle East that start drawing kindles. It will die down before August. We pray that many of our South Korean brothers and sisters will really overcome all these problems that came from the Middle East. And we pray as well for all of the national leaders all over the world, especially our own here in America, Reverend and Dr. Michael Malcolm and wife Tomiko and their children and the staff at Fort Worth, Fort Worth uh, Street. We pray for their success always as they have posted our two mother Lacey. We pray for their success and we pray as well for the vice president, including Reverend Nevin Stevens and his wife and children and child. And we pray as well for all the regions and districts, especially here in District 1 in the Middle Atlantic area. We pray for our leader, Reverend Ernest Patton and his wife, Keiko Patton, their children, and all the districts. We pray for the success always as we pray for our pastor, Reverend James Stewart of Tolson Center, Father Adrian Bayo of Richmond, Virginia, Reverend Akiva Ota in North Virginia, and here in the Beltway, we pray for Ms. Lagoon and Pastor Robert in Maryland. We pray for the co pastors there, Reverend and Mrs. Greg Jones and Reverend Jim Boothby. And here in the Beltway, we pray for the ACLC chairman of Bishop Augustus Collins and his wife and two children, and our pastor, Reverend Xavier Olga, his wife, Kung San, and daughter, Diana, and all the church councils and blessed families who are coming today for the sports fest starting at 9.30 a.m. We pray for good weather, our most beloved heavenly parents, we pray that all the good spirits will give us this window until we can go home this afternoon. We pray that everybody will be safe in coming here as we are doing this annual sports fest to really exercise not only our mind but also our body. And we pray for each other's success as we now hear your word in our humble church. And we pray all of this in all our name, in my name, Athanasius Francis, speak of the Lamb, bless the whole family. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Good morning. We're now on page 305 with a new subtopic, number five, the blessing of Jesus and the Christian thought. When we look at the principle of creation, God first created Adam and then created Eve, centering on Adam. Therefore, Mary should have supported her son and should have looked for a bride for him. Mary should have done this, not only Jesus. Mary had to support Jesus and had to look for the bride. In this respect, we can understand that Mary did not fulfill her responsibility. Mary told Jesus at the marriage in Cana in Galilee, that they had run out of wine, to which Jesus said, replied, Woman, what have you to do with me? Jesus was saying, What does the other man's marriage have to do with me? In other words, the time for Jesus to have a wife had come and he was asking Mary why she had not realized that. 
Mary did not fulfill her responsibility. If Jesus had married, his sons and daughters would have been God's grandsons and granddaughters. Jesus' uh, sons and daughters would have been God's family. Some people say Jesus is God himself, but those people are crazy. Those people are the heretics of heretics. They are saying, what does it mean for Jesus to get married just like us, earthly people? They would lose their hope if they understood that the Holy God got married. Why is that? If someone gets married, why should he or she cease being holy? The most holy thing for a man and woman is to get married. If Jesus had married and had a son and daughter, then who would have become the Pope? Would a person such as Peter have been the one? And there was laughter. No. The sons and daughters of Jesus, direct lineage, would have become the popes. Then, naturally, Jesus would have become the king of the world. However, because Jesus, who tried to form a foundation on this earth, died, Christianity lost Israel and could only realize the spiritual Israel. Therefore, God does not have a nation in which he can prepare his foundation. Are the churches a kingdom which Jesus can possess? This is why the churches have been rejected. The Unification Church appeared with this secret. So the Christians who are in the position of servants are afraid and now oppose us. If they want to oppose, they can go ahead. We can stay still. This is similar to the communists coming out to throw down their bourgeoisie. They should be careful. Who will be thrown out? Will they be thrown out or will Reverend Moon of the Unification Church be thrown out? They will be thrown out. The problem is not the number of people. The problem is one person. Why did Jesus have to die? If Jesus had married, would he have died or not? If a woman from an established church hear this, she will be astonished. She will murmur, Jesus getting married? Everyone was Jesus, a man or a woman. Open and close, a man. If Jesus were a man, would or would not Jesus have had the characteristics of a man, open and close, he would have. Then, if there was a good woman, would or would not Jesus have wanted to marry her? There is no question about it. If there were time, if there were time today, I would answer all your questions, but there is no time today. When I have time, let's meet again. You should understand this very well through the principle. If you were born as a man, you were born knowing that there is a woman. Then did Jesus who was born as a man need to get married or not? Open and close, he should have gotten married. If Jesus, who came as the Son of God, married and had a son and a daughter, what would they be? 
they would be the grandsons and daughters and granddaughters of God. Would God dislike looking at his grandsons and granddaughters? Or would he enjoy it? There is no question about it. God would like it. Then why did Jesus have to die? It was because Jesus' mother, Mary, could not find him a wife. There, this is why there is resentment remaining. This was why Jesus criticized Mary, saying to her at the marriage in Cana, Woman, what have you to do with me? He meant that her concern was a nuisance. She was worrying about wine when she would have been preparing a way for her son. These circumstances drove Jesus into a corner. However, the Christians, without knowing this, are believing in vagaries. They are, are they saying that they will go to heaven and become the Lord's bride? In order to be a bride, they must know everything about the groom from his situation and mission to the sadness and pain through which he went. And then they must serve. I see people saying Jesus went through suffering without knowing anything that is not right. We members of the Unification Church are different from such believers in the established churches. And we're now on page 307. You must remember that Jesus stood before Mary and pleaded in tears three times. Jesus, mother, Mary did not listen. So Jesus had to leave his home when he turned 30, starting his public life course. Then, what was Mary to do? Mary was to prepare the reciprocal partner of Jesus and prepare a historical foundation. In order for Jesus to complete this foundation, Mary was to support Jesus and take all the responsibility to elevate Jesus' resentment. Furthermore, based on the foundation of Joseph's family, Mary was to pick a bride for Jesus and prepare a holy wedding for him. However, this dissipate, dissipated as if it had been a dream. Mary was tied up too much with her living concerns and her own problems with her husband. The child mother or cooperation until the time of Jesus was part of the foundation to search for a son. In what position was Mary standing? A servant's position. Mary gave birth to her son, but it was through her body as a servant. Jesus need a, or needed a bride. According to the principle of creation, a woman must be created. Jesus, in the position of Adam, had to seek the lost Eve. Then Jesus could marry. However, was Jesus able to find Eve? No. Jesus was searching, but he had to die. Therefore, Jesus has to come again. Jesus comes again and marries. Is that right? Jesus died without being able to get married. So he has to come again in order to get married. The idea that Jesus should get married is Christian thought. 
and there was laughter. Therefore, at the time of the second coming, what celebration did I say would be held? And the answer was a, a marriage feast. What is a marriage feast? A marriage feast means that a woman goes to the man and the man receives the woman. A marriage feast is a marriage ceremony. Isn't that right? Open and close, yes. If I tell this story, people make a big uh, fuss saying, I am a heretic. Christians become very envious. In order to hold the marriage feast, that is, the feast of the Lamb, Jesus needs a bride. Therefore, the bride must be found. Who is the bride? It is Eve. It is Eve who was together with Adam before the fall. The Lord of the second advent is the third Adam. The third Adam comes in the position of Adam before the fall and has to search for Eve before the fall. The third Adam must find the unfallen Eve and have the feast of the Lamb. Through the fall, Adam and Eve who were to become the parents of humankind, became the parents of evil. Therefore, if we can find parents of goodness before the fall, then the restoration would be complete. Therefore, parents of goodness are necessary for humankind. The feast of the Lamb is necessary for the parents of goodness to be Recognize. Christian thought is very simple. This is the backbone of the Christian thought. And we're now on page 308. When we look at Jesus, Jesus could not love his family. Think of how miserable Jesus was. Christians mention many things. Believing in Jesus as the Messiah. But think of how miserable Jesus was. Was Jesus able to love his family or the nation or the world or God? No, he couldn't. He couldn't love though he tried with all his heart. And we have a new subtopic. It's already 520. Roman numeral number two, the feast of the Lamb and the first resurrection. Number one, the realization of God's ideal through the feast of the Lamb. As you know, God planned to realize his kingdom on earth from the beginning. In other words, God tried to fulfill his will through Adam and Eve. If Adam and Eve faithfully had obeyed God, they would have become perfect. And God would have made them marry, forming the first family on earth. This family would have been the cornerstone of the heavenly kingdom on earth. Adam and Eve were to become the true father and true mother of all humanity. The Garden of Eden symbolizes heaven on earth. The world then would have become a world returning joy to God. However, the first Adam and Eve failed, leaving the ideal of God unfulfilled. God had planned to realize the original heaven and try to complete a world of joy. Therefore, 4,000 years later, God tried to restore his nation on earth through another perfected Adam. Jesus Christ was this perfected Adam. In 1 Corinthians 15, there is a verse which mentions 
Jesus is the later Adam or the second Adam. Jesus came 2,000 years ago as the perfected Adam to fulfill the mission of the first Adam who failed. The restoration of Adam alone does not bring about the kingdom of heaven. A bride, in other words, a woman, is necessary. Therefore, another Eve was selected. God sent Jesus Christ, who came as the perfected Adam, to restore his own bride, the perfected Eve. Their family would have restored the family of the first Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. Because of the betrayal of the chosen Israelites, the perfection of the second Adam and Eve was not realized. However, since the will of God does not change, God promised the second coming of Christ. Since the death of Jesus Christ approximately 2,000 years ago have passed, already God is preparing to send His Son as the third Adam. In the course of history, God fulfilled the goal by guiding humankind through three stages. Three is the number of completion. Finally, this time, God will hold the festival of the marriage in order to bless the perfected Adam and Eve. Then God will form the foundation for the kingdom of heaven on earth, fulfilling the goal which he kept over the long historical period. The book of Reve Revelation prophesies this culmination point. This is the marriage feast of the Lamb. The Lord of the second advent is indeed the Lamb and the perfected Adam. The Lord will come as the perfected Adam and will restore the perfected Eve. Then Adam and Eve become the first parents of humankind and God's joy will be completely fulfilled. And we're now on page 309. The feast of the Lamb means that God blesses one person who is perfected as the subject of love, his life, and ideal in the position of the original ancestor created 6,000 years ago. A sinless parent. This is to place the, that person in the position of the ancestor of goodness before all humankind. When the invisible and visible God who becomes the parent of humankind unites and gives birth to his sons and daughters, then a substantial human being with eternal spirit appears. When the spiritual and substantial be, be, being uh, comes together, then for the first time, the son and the daughter born from there have an eternal spirit. Then we become sons and daughters who can call to the Father both spiritually and substantially. In the last days, we must unify that which God, Adam and Eve, could not, horizontally and vertically centering on the eternal life, love and ideal. Therefore, when the spiritual God and the substantial true parents become one, not only the spiritual and the physical body of an individual, but also the position of children will be restored within the harmony of heaven and earth. Then we will be restored to the position of sons and daughters who can receive God's love. Jesus tried to unify this world as sinless sons and daughters, 
sinless clans, sinless tribes, and sinless world coming from sinless parents. However, Jesus died on the cross through the unfaithfulness of the Israelites. The Lord has to come again. Therefore, when this world perfects God's love, God's life, and God's ideal on the individual, family, clan, tribal, and world level, then this world becomes the heavenly kingdom of God. God's greatest hope for humankind was that we in the object position and God in the subject position completely unite with the will of God in the relationship of father and children and together with the holy true parent become true children, a true clan, a true tribe and finally realize the kingdom of heaven on earth. Therefore, men and women were to realize a heavenly kingdom on earth in which God's eternal love, life and ideal could be connected in every direction. What is the feast of the Lamb mentioned in the Christianity? It is to substantialize in the last days the true parents whom God tried to send 6,000 years ago and to substantialize the position of brother and sister and the position of children. This was the hope of Jesus in whom we believe and it was the hope of God who has been suffering throughout 6,000 year history in order to guide us. You must clearly understand that the Feast of the Lamb refers to a providence of salvation which has to or has its hope fixed upon the original world in which Adam, Eve and God can rejoice after this miserable history. Now it's 5.30, we have almost uh, two paragraphs to read before we end this first subtopic. We're now on page 310. Where is the son and daughter who can call God my father, longing for him in the midst of their desperate search? The day God can find such sons and daughters is the day of hope and the day of his liberation from resentment. In religious terms, this day is called the Feast of the Lamb. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve could not unite with God and instead betrayed Him. Restore, restoration can begin. Then, uh, this is, other, in other words, is the Feast of the Lamb. The Bible mentions the day of the feast of the Lamb. This could be called a day when two are united in one. All humankind has been waiting for this day, for this day is a day to be celebrated eternally. Therefore, the goal of the providence, the ideal of human history, and the purpose of religion come to a harmonized conclusion at this point. Unification is only possible when a true man and true woman can stand in a position to be publicly recognized by God. This truly is the feast of the Lamb. So that ends our Hunduke. It's now 5.32 a.m. And we started on page 305 with uh, the subtopic number five, the blessing of Jesus and Christian thought. And of course, the second topic, the feast of the Lamb and the first resurrection, with subtopic, the realization of God's ideal through the feast of the Lamb. 
So, uh, is there anybody who wants to share about the reading today? Anyone from the Delhi conference? Yes. So, on our reading about the blessing of Jesus and Christian thought, when we look at the principle of creation, God first created Adam and then created Eve, centering on Adam. Therefore, Mary should have supported her son, Mother Mary, and should have looked for a bride for him or Jesus Christ and Mary should have done this not only Jesus Mary had to support Jesus and had to look for the bride as for my reflection even yesterday the Israelites or if you're a Jew you're always betrothed at, at an early age at even 13 years old and they grow up you know having betrothed to somebody and they marry very young, even 18, 19, 20, 21. And Jesus is already 30, and uh, we did read today about the wedding at Cana in Galilee. And he was approached by his mother to turn the water into wine because they, they already are running out of wine and of course Jesus replied woman what have you to do with me Jesus was saying what does the other man's marriage have to do with me in other words the time of Jesus to have a wife had come and he was asking Mary why she had not realized that Mary did not fulfill his response, her responsibility. But for the Christian thought, they thought that it was not time for Jesus to come out to be recognized as the Son of God. But in reality, it was. You know, he admonished Mary why I help other people when you should have helped me helped me about my mar marriage. So, uh, as we also read further, uh, the holiness of Jesus sh should not even be lost when he gets married. Because the idea of the Christian thought is he died for our sins. So that was our topic yesterday. He should not have died. He should have become the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah to be king of kings, wise counsel or Emmanuel, and the great father. So he never become a counselor. He can be a counselor, but as a, as a single brother, but not a father. And if Jesus also had married and had a son and daughter, then who would become the popes? The pope right now is only a man, but if he had daughters too, would a person even such as Peter have been the one? There would be no need for Peter. They will be using instead of his lineage and uh, the sons of daughters of Jesus direct lineage would have become the popes then naturally Jesus would have become the king king of the world because it was from Israel, Israel he could have conquered Rome and then the whole world 2000 years ago and however because Jesus who tried to form a foundation on earth died Christianity lost Israel and could only realize the spiritual Israel. So this means that 
he can have spiritual children with you know the holy spirit who is the the uh, spiritual eve because he cannot make or multiply children he can uh, only consider christians as his spiritual sons and daughters so it was a spiritual israel so as we learn here from the marriage of the, the lamb he has to come again to bring a bride and a family to god that's why he needs to have a second coming to be the bride uh, the, the groom who will have a bride in the marriage of the lamb and it's in 1 Corinthians uh, as we have read today 1 Corinthians 15 there is a verse which mentions as Jesus as the later Adam or the second Adam and in some other verses also that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches so if he is the vine and we are the branches he is like a tree because the vine goes up on a tree and of course we know who will be you know uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil because Jesus as a tree is a tree of life and if he is Adam he needs also the Eve you know so it never came to be so God has to make a foothold on this earth and it didn't even make a foothold 6,000 years ago because of the fall God has to do this restoration because that is his you know not only goal but his his dream to have a man and woman that he can incarnate he can go in to their spirit go to uh, and their bodies as the temple of the living God but they never became a temple they they were you know it was taken over by Satan who told Adam and Eve to or bless them instead of God blessing them and we have fallen uh, world fallen humanity fallen society family nation and world so God has to bring Jesus back uh, as the third Adam and we have the Lord of the second coming so with the same mission as Jesus and we have the true parents so if you uh, hear this uh, playback if you want to learn more about the second coming we know where and when and even who is the Lord of the second coming and you can uh, attend our lectures about the divine principle and it unlocks the Bible on who and where and when the second coming will come because we, even the Christians now are very restless now it's already 2015 and they don't know where and when and who will be the Lord of the second coming so anyone else wants to share about our reading today so happy Father's Day again to uh, everyone who has their own father their own uncles and uh, or even sons yes anyone who wants to share about the reading if there is none let's all rise and have unison prayer our most beloved heavenly parents we're so thankful for this reading today that we from the unification church know deeply what the suffering and the suffering even of God is all about. We pray that we can comfort Jesus 
and John Newsom. That we can have lived with our since then. And now, since God has a foothold with our true parents, we pray that with the true children and all the blessed families, he can live with us in our midst. And we pray that as he came gradually from the east, we can go to the west and all over the world. We pray that we can bless this world with all the seven billion plus people all over the world and he bring them to your practice. And we pray that you use us always, our heavenly parents, as your voice box, your instrument to bring this good news to all over the world. And we pray that they will join our holy wedding ceremonies and we pray also that the blessing candidates will keep their purity before the blessing. And those who are blessed couples too, we pray that we can always keep the blessing and always protect our second generation and even the third generation and we pray for each other's success as we navigate through the murky waters here in the secular world. And we pray for forgiveness and harmony between all the American people, the African Americans, and all of the immigrants here in this great country, the United States of America. And we pray all of this in all our names and in my name, Athanasius Francis and my wife, Wasana Catalan, blessed Central family, our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. Uri so warm See you in Rock Creek Park today at 9.30. And let's pray for good weather for a sports fest. Well, have a great and wonderful Sunday. And happy Father's Day again to all fathers.